Thank you for the opportunity to be here. I'm Sharmi as I'm one of the faculty at UCLA in the Department of Pediatrics. Um, in February 2010, for a number of reasons, we decided to study the, the impact of um, health pollutants um, from Santa Monica Airport um, on the community. But as pediatricians, we obviously focus mostly on um, its effect on children and pregnant women. And we're delighted that the community actually cares about children and pregnant women. We believe what, what affects them will affect all of us, and it's not particular to them. Um, it's, it's a little bit important to understand how we did this. This is basically based on existing scientific data, and some of the sources seen there are all the most important scientific resources we have available to us as physicians and scientists. Um, we also looked at some of the public standards and regulations and guidelines that may be relevant to airport planning and health. To, to make a second part of that, which we will not go so much into today, that's the recommendation for mitigating the problem. If the, if the panel's interested, we can certainly go into that. Next slide, please. So we, we wanted to focus on what community we look at. This is a this is an aerial picture of the Santa Monica Airport. And it's, what's striking about this airport is that it's in, within the heart of the community, which is very highly um, populated. If you look at just the Northwest Dale, where it um, seems to be greatly affected, and it's downwind from the airport, um, just in, in the two mile radius, you have 150,000 residents. And within that, again, from a pediatric point of view, we see a very large population registered preschools, elementary schools, middle schools, um, colleges, which, you know, the population of children or young adults who spend time in these areas is quite prolonged. It's for a big part of their life they spend time in these places, learning centers. We also found there are a lot of you know, daycares that are out of homes, and we actually don't know how many children are in those places. Um, there are six parks. Interesting, two of them are right on the border of the airport. There's no buffer between the two. Next. So, uh, obviously, the takeoff and landing are probably, in particular, a significant problem, and they seem to have elevated uh, levels of um, a number of problems. Uh, I think we talked very nicely about uh, what are some of these things, and I'll briefly go over them, and how do they really affect um, you biologically and physiologically. But it's important to realize um, carbon black is one of those things, and we're going to go into these in detail. But one of the things these carbon, carbon black does, or black carbon, depending on what you call them, they cause respiratory and cardiovascular problems. Asthma is one of the more obvious ones. But they do also cause sudden death. They do cause irreversible lung damage in children. And um, they do have carcinogenic effect, which we'll see how. Um, Ultrafine particles that um, seem to be more and more uh, you know, part of the scientific uh, community's uh, studies, um, there is a lot on rodent models. But there is some evidence that it does affect um, uh, children and adults as well. And it does cause increased inflammation in the lungs. And increased inflammation is responsible for a lot of problems, from cardiovascular problems to long-term um, risk factor for cancer. Next one, please. Um, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons is one of those big problems that we see um, from incomplete combustion of um, some of these um, uh, uh, fuels. And basically, uh, it, in addition to the fact that they have carcinogenic effect, they do disrupt hormonal balance in adults, and especially reproductive, uh, reproductive system in, in pregnant women. And they do seem to lower IQ in children um, uh, to a point where it's not just statistically significant, it's actually clinically relevant. Um, jet noise. Jet noise is one of those things that everybody thinks of as kind of a nuisance, and you may you know, get used to it or not. But in fact, it has physiologic effect. Um, some of the physiologic effect I, we didn't bring up in this report simply because it's still being studied. But some of the things we mentioned here are well studied and well established. Um, and the biggest problem is that there's no buffer zone. I think that's the theme that keeps coming up in, um, in all these discussions. Next one, please. So just to go not so much into the chemistry of these things, but what, are they, what we concentrated on was carbon black, ultrafine, and polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. And these are just simple depictions of uh, what you see there. Um, next one. So carbon black. <clears throat> it's interesting to understand in children, 
the lungs simply grow very rapidly in the first 18 years of life and then they stop. So what you have at 18 years is it. Anything you do after that, from surgery to, to severe infections and cancer, they can simply decrease lung capacity. When you arrest the lung capacity up until age 18, that simply means by the time you're 18, everything else will simply degrade from then on. And if you don't have a very good reserve, you don't have a very good chance of longevity and, and resisting disease later on in life. So this seems to have a big effect on children. Um, sudden death, particularly in those with history of cardiac disease and a heart attack, everyone thinks of cardiac disease as something you get with old age. There are a large number of children with um, congenital heart disease post-transplant. This is a community where we attract a lot of those children from all over. They get their care at UCLA and therefore they're at high risk if they live in this community. DNA methylation is an important factor and I think that's one of the things I want to highlight here. How does karma black cause problem? We don't quite know why it decreases what's called DNA methylation, but DNA, just because its structure is intact, that doesn't mean that it does what it's supposed to do. How it's methylated seems to make a difference in the physiologic effects we see. The cardiac disease and cancer, in, in, in those patients, if you look at them, they seem to have decreased DNA methylation. Now, what causes that? There are a number of things from radiation to other things, but carbon black seems to be very efficient in doing that as well. <coughs> These, unfortunately, can we go back? Unfortunately, what, what's, what's a little bit scary about carbon black is that if your children, your offsprings are never disposed or uh, exposed to any of this carbon black, and if their parents are exposed, these children will have the same effect or similar effect as their parents, even though they were never exposed to diesel. And that seems to be because they bind themselves to the cells' DNA of, of the cells that generate sperms. And also, when you're born as a woman, the number of um, eggs that you carry simply decreases throughout life. But what you, your, your child that you deliver at age 20 versus 40 versus thereon, um, it's all from the cells that you were born with. So if you were exposed at any point to any of these things, your egg will carry the, the same footprint of that carbon black to the next generation. What happens to the generation after that, we don't know, but we do see the same risk factors for cancer in children who were never exposed, but their parents were exposed. <laughs> and that's, that's really the, um, the striking thing about carbon black. Next one, please. Ultra fine power recording, I think there's a lot of um, discussion about these things. I do want to um, uh, point out it does cause atherosclerosis. It does seem to affect um, the, the cell walls of, of the arteries when you have atherosclerosis. If you look at these children or you look at young adults who were exposed, they look as if they were aged. And that puts them at risk for these uh, blood vessels suddenly bursting and causing myocardial attacks and strokes. And that's how you see some premature death in those who are exposed to these things. Everybody th hears about oxidative effect. Oxidative effect, you know, from pomegranate to everything else they sell us. It's supposed to be antioxidant. Well, nothing will compete with these uh, ultrafine particles. Um, they're very oxidative. They cause just across the board cell damage and cell aging, or what mimics cell aging in these, um, and those who were exposed. Next one, please. <clears throat> Polycyclic um, aromatic hydrocarbons have a number of um, problems, from um, headaches to neurologic effects. You see a number of things. What we highlighted here is the fact that, again, they love your DNA. They, they're very efficient at um, transferring it across the cell wall, transferring it along the nucleus wall, and binding themselves to the DNA. As a fact of that, they're genotoxic. And again, I want to emphasize, you are your genes. Once you affect those, the blueprint for every cell, which constitutes the rest of the body, is really much, uh, very much affected by all this. Um, the genotoxic effect, cancer is simply one of those things. Um, endocrine disruptance, um, it affects fetal growth, and because of the fact that it decreases fetal growth, whether it's the brain or the heart or the rest of the body, it puts you at risk for having mental retardation. And just to get some numbers here, those who were explored are three times more likely to have um, any kind of moderate mental retardation than those who were not. What's interesting about it is that we monitor children in the first 
three to five years of life very closely, you don't see that effect in year number one or number two. But when you look at them in the year number three, you see that. Why is that? It's because in the first two years of life, you're really looking at gross motor, fine motor, language. But when you get to cognitive function, when you get to three and above, and you're looking at the cognitive function, they seem to be somewhat behind. And it seems to function, and it seems to affect the higher functions of the brain. Next one, please. <clears throat> I want to spend a little bit of time on, on noise. The current threshold of 6 to 5 decibels is really a day and night average sound level. But in between all these things, whenever a jet takes off, the sound level goes up to 95 or even above that. Some of these tend to be even noisier than that. The question is, do you get any kind of effect from these just sudden bursts of uh, noise and then when it goes down? What if you even go down 10 points at 85 decibels? You can see hearing loss. So repeated exposure to 85 decibels or above, even if it's intermittent, could cause problem. For every five decibels increase in noise in children in classrooms, you see them falling up to two months behind in the reading. So noisy schools tend to have lower performance than, um, than, than schools that are not so noisy. This is well studied in England and somewhat in the US as well. Um, and they seem to affect both short and long-term memory across the board, in small children, in adults, and in geriatric as well. Um, I think the next one is, um, this is basically, a, I don't know how well you can see it from the back of the room. It, it basically summarizes what we see, um, and it's coming from a Mac to a PC, so it's a little bit off. But, um, but basically, uh, what you're seeing is uh, the effects of these things. The two major effects are exposure to noise and chemicals. And each one of those chemicals, which have some of those effects, these are highlights of those effects. They're subtle effects that are not so well set in. We did not include in our, in our report. Um, and the next slide, I think, just summarizes people who are involved in creating these. Three of our faculty, and this is a group from a Community Health and Advocacy Track, which is part of UCLA residency. That's the end of our presentation. Thank you. I have to say, I think that was one of the most troubling studies I've ever seen. Yes. And I think the study speaks for itself. Um, so, Councilman Rosano, do you have any questions? Just curious about the population of people you interacted with, the geography you covered, the, the basic imperial, uh, empirical data that gave you these conclusions. Again, this data is based on all existing information as to how these chemicals typically react. This is not a study of particular problem within the community. That's a different study that we're not presenting here at this time. But yes, there's evidence that within this community, you're seeing the carcinogenic effect in children. Thank you. Um, by the way, I just want to highlight some of the things in this study in the executive summary. I think you, you do state a flat out that the proximity of San Monk Airport to schools, daycare centers, and parks, in addition to residential homes, poses great exposure risks to children and to their families. And I assume, uh, would this, how was this study funded? Um, this study was funded by UCLA. We, okay. Most of the people who work here didn't work on a grant. So for, uh, so for folks who don't think there's any issue here, you may just want to look at the study uh, again. So we're going to call uh, up, if you could stay there, that'd be great. Call up next, uh, Dr.